Aloha class, welcome to this tutorial on how to create a market research survey that uses Google Forms. What I've done here is I've created a basic survey and I'm going to walk you through every feature that Google Forms has and then at the end of this I'm going to show you an actual survey that I've done and just give you some tips and tricks on how to do your own. You should treat this tutorial as more of a reference. I am sure that some of these features will be easy to understand, but there might be a few that you're not sure on, and so you can come back to this video and take a look at it. So getting started off, you will want to go to google.com forward slash forms, and there you'll be given an option to create a form. And when you do, you can name your form and give it a description if you like. And then you're going to be given a little toolbar and where you can actually start creating questions here. This toolbar will allow you to add in questions, and you can see over here on the side where uh, it tells you exactly what it is, but you can actually create the, your survey on a spreadsheet and import it into Google Forms. This will help you format, add pictures and videos, and create sections, which we'll talk about at the end of this tutorial. So getting started, we're going to go with a short answer. You know, what is your name? They put in their name. One thing to note is to make sure that your questions are required. Not all questions need to be required, but most of them do. And I ask myself if I'm not requiring it, why I have it in the survey. But I will show you a question at the end of this survey that you won't require, but it is very rare. So the next question is going to be a paragraph question. Obviously, people might have very strong feelings on why classes are online due to the coronavirus, so you want to give them plenty of space. And I've opened up over here. This is a tab that shows what it looks like. It looks exactly like what this is right here, but Google differentiates it as a paragraph one. Jumping back here, we can see the next is a multiple choice. And here we have what is your favorite primary color, red, yellow, or blue. And you have to select one or the other. There's also an option here to add other where people can type in their favorite color. But since we're talking about primary colors and there's only three primary colors, it doesn't make sense to have other. Next, we have select all the activities you would like to do. So if we Look here, these are just check boxes. We have a drop down, and with the drop down, obviously, you put in what are the best universities to attend, and it just looks like that where you have a drop down. Honestly, this is very similar to the multiple choice, and you may just do it because you're trying to conserve space, which is something that you actually do. You don't want to make the survey look too long, or people will bounce out of the survey. Now what we go is into a linear scale. It allows people to be able to not just say either or, but to give a range. And so obviously, how much do you like your homework? You can be a one as I hate doing homework, or a 10, I love doing homework. And when we look over here, we can see that obviously you guys are going to choose a 10 because you love doing homework. And then we're going to move to a multiple choice grid and this multiple choice grid it's actually easier to see on the front end of it it allows you to create rows so rate each professor and then columns on exactly how you feel about them so if you see here here are the professors here's how you feel and then we have a check box grid which again is much easier to see on the front end of the survey where you can check all the different ones that you like and notice how when if you don't check one of this it is telling you you need to select at least one in every single category so we'll say brother white is pretty knowledgeable and also pretty funny and then we have here the date and this is more to just make sure that people put in a date versus typing out March 18th, 2020. They would put in 0, 3, 17, 2020. And then we have a timestamp. And this 
again, it's just like the calendar where you're wanting to make sure they're putting in the exact time. And then finally, this is the one question that I don't require down here. But would you be willing to participate in further research? If so, please provide your email address. And obviously, if they're not willing, they shouldn't be forced to put in the email address. But this is a great question to do follow up on people who have an interest in your topic, which hopefully you can help them become customers of whatever you're doing. So if you look here, we went down through all of these here with the exception of a file upload. Here you can have a question where you can ask people to upload a file and then that goes to your Google Drive. And you want to be careful because people can upload obviously obscene things or viruses. So I very rarely use that sort of question, but it is an option. So if we look again over at the survey here, we can see just all, each of those things uh, that you can do with Google Forms. But this isn't the only thing. There's one other thing that's extremely helpful. That is, what if you want to have only those who like red to answer the entire survey? So if you do that, anyone that selects yellow or blue, you want them to skip all of these questions. So the way to do that is to add multiple sections. First, we need to go where we want to make the skip, which would be at the colors. To add in a section, we would click what looks like the equal sign, and there it creates a break, and let's just call this survey. And then we'll go down to our last question. Even though people might like blue or yellow, we still want to capture their email address if they're willing to do future surveys. So we're going to create another section and we're going to move this question into it. And let's just call this section, thank you. Now going back up to our primary color question, we're going to click on it and, and then select here to go to section based answers the section based answers we want everyone selects red to move to the next section but let's move everybody else to thank you now we can see when we fill out the survey and let's let's click on this little eye this allows us to preview our results and if we we have to fill these out because these are all required so let's say bob smith is doing this and he's fine with online classes and let's say his favorite primary color is blue when he clicks next it will skip him to the very end as a thank you and ask him if he would like to participate in future surveys the final part of this tutorial is just to show you a survey that i had done with a student here and this survey was particularly looking at the different types of food uh, that people were eating here on Hawaii and so we have just the different questions we start out with the demographics what their age is what their gender is and these questions are important and you should have them so they help you better understand who your customer is and then what their ethnicity is obviously these are all multiple choice and then where are you currently living and this is where we will see a section break if they select hawaii they'll go to the next section and any of the other ones will jump them to the end of the survey you can see these are all very familiar of what we just went over but this is what happens when you have open-ended questions like what we see here and i i have the re results. So if you look right here, we have 51 people who've responded to this survey. We can see the graphs of the different questions, but when you get to the open ended questions, such as right here, you know, this was asking their opinion on why they ranked this out of a scale from 1 to 10. But here we have of all the countries, what is your favorite ethnic food? such as Mexican or Asian food. And you can see we have like Indian and Mexican. We have 
Lots of different ones that say Japanese, but they say it in different ways. Food, food, cuisine, Japanese. Uh, I think someone on here even had, oh no, that's the next one. What is your favorite meal to eat? Then they put dinner, which we were actually looking for more of a cuisine. But that's what's going to happen when you have opened into questions. And this is good and bad because you learn things that you would never have learned if you just had multiple choice. But you are also going to get information that's not helpful. And this data can go a long ways to get inside the head of your ideal customer, to make your product better, to compare you against competitors. So there's a lot of advantages in doing surveys. Obviously, there are other ways to get information, this just being one of them. But give it a shot and try it out, and good luck.